Dear students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University and in today's session I shall discuss with you about the cell structure and function. Cell is the smallest structural and functional unit in the body of plant or the animal and it was discovered by Robert Hooke when he was examining cork from plant. He saw some hexagonal bodies and he saw some structures inside but he definitely saw the hexagonal bodies which he named cell. So this is the first time somebody had seen the cell and it was coined the term cell. These were the empty boxes. The only thing he could see that there are some boxes arranged one after another and he coined the term cell for it and this is the beginning of the story of cell. Let us begin with the story of cell. In 1600, Robert Hooke had shown these compartment like structures, but it was around 1830 when the serious work on cell began. People wanted to know what is this cell about and this cell is found only in the living bodies, plants and animals and they wanted to know more about it and they wanted to develop a definite concept in the field of biology by defining what cell is. Around 1838 Schleiden and 1839 Schwann, these two scientists Schleiden and Schwann gave us cell theory. They told us what cell theory is according to them and of course it is correct. They said that all living organisms are composed of cells. This is how the cell theory goes that all living bodies whether animal or plant are composed of cells or cells are the building blocks. Second thing, all cells can come only from pre-existing cells. There should be a cell which will give rise to a new cell. According to cell theory, a cell can be made only from pre-existing cell. So there should be a cell which will give rise to more cells. This particular part of the theory discarded the original theory of spontaneous generation because in olden days people saw that if there is cow dung lying for a long time some worms will appear in the cow dung and they said there is a spontaneous generation of life or cell. That was not the case. Now we knew a cell can come out only from a cell. So cell is formed from pre-existing cell. So this was the second point of the theory. So two points being all living organisms are composed of cell and cell can be formed only from pre-existing cell and third point of course that it is the smallest functional and structural unit of the living body. So this is how the cell theory is explained. All organisms are made up of cells. If it is a flower, it is made up of cells. If it is rabbit or rat, it is made up of cells. But there is some difference between animal cell and plant cell, but there are more common features between the two types of cells. Before we go into the details of cell organelles or structures inside the cell, let me also make you aware of cell sizes. My dear students, you will be amused to know there are so many different sizes and also shapes of cells which we can see. It starts from 1 millimeter down to 1 micron and surface to volume ratio requires cell to be very small. So we have very small cells, we have microscopic cells we have big cells which we can see with unaided eyes and we have seen otherwise also like hen's egg which some people eat and of course the biggest one the ostrich egg that is also one cell. So cells are of different categories, different sizes, 
different shapes and they have different functions to perform but even after all these variations they have the same structures inside the cell body. Basically if we see the evolutionary path we can definitely say two clear cut pictures of cells one which is prokaryotic cell and other is going to be eukaryotic cell. Prokaryotic is a primitive cell. When life originated on earth, definitely it happened in seawater. All the chemicals required for a cell, there was accidental union of those chemical in a particular correct proportion and a membrane was formed. That was our first cell and that was prokaryotic cell because the nucleus was not well defined. I don't mean to say that nucleus was not there. The nuclear material was spread in the cytoplasmic part, doing its function, doing its job, performing all the activities of nucleus, but nuclear membrane was not there. So this was our primitive cell, which we called prokaryotic cell. It had all the cell organelles in some form or the other performing all the functions of a cell except that nuclear membrane and well defined nucleus was not there. Coming to more evolved cell, a typical eukaryotic cell, eukaryotic means presence of nucleus. You can see the nucleus is present. You can also see mitochondria, Golgi body, ribosomes, vacuoles, cytoplasm and inside the nucleus nucleolus and there will be chromosomes also. So this is typical eukaryotic cell which is more evolved. In our body we have all the cells of this kind except the RBCs. In our all the cells we have nucleus because nucleus gives us stability. Nucleus is the reason for stability of a cell. Once the cell is formed it will live for a long time and do its function. But in case of RBC in our body, we do not have nucleus because perhaps we are more evolved in that respect. We did not have nucleus in the beginning, that is our prokaryotic cell. Then we have nucleus, that is our eukaryotic cell. And after having all the eukaryotic cell in our body, we decided to lose nucleus in one of the cells in our body called RBC. So definitely it is more evolved and more specialized and the purpose is that we can carry more hemoglobin, more oxygen. For that we need more space in the cell, hence nucleus was removed. But we have paid cost for it. The life span of RBC is limited. Now it is 120 days in absence of nucleus and hence our body has to form RBCs again and again. Plant cell, of course it is also eukaryotic because it has nucleus. There is some difference between plant cell and animal cell. You can see a big vacuole here. The plant cell will have a big vacuole and also a cell wall after cell membrane. Vacuoles are more to store more water which will make leaves and the plant parts moist. But plant cell, the developed one is always eukaryotic. You can see some green color chloroplast and also you can see some plastids which are absent in animal cell. Coming down to differences between plant cell and animal cell. Whenever we talk about cell, the first thing comes into mind is membrane. It is this cell membrane which was suddenly formed and that is why cell was formed. Otherwise all the chemicals which you have in your body, which you have in your cell are in the water in the environment. But there is no life, animal life or plant life in that. Now when those chemicals in a particular proportion are surrounded by a cell membrane, now this is a live cell. So cell membrane becomes very important because it is outer boundary of the cell. Also it is selectively permeable 
it allows certain things to move in, certain things to move out and it does not allow certain things to enter. So, it has very big capability which we are going to discuss in a separate session. Now, cell membrane is present in both the plant cell and the animal cell, but cell wall is present only in plant cell. In addition to cell membrane, it will give rigidity and more strength to the plant cell. The vacuoles which are very few or absent in animal cell are present in a very nice way in plant cell and very big in size and filled with fluid. Chloroplast is absent in animal cell whereas chloroplast is present in plant cell for the purpose of photosynthesis. We have discussed my dear students in earlier sessions that plants capture sun energy by process of photosynthesis, prepare their food and that becomes food for us also. So, in absence of plants we cannot have food and that is done by chloroplast by trapping energy of sun by the process of photosynthesis. So, this is present in plant cell not in animal cell and lysosomes which are present in animal cell are absent in plant cell. The cell wall which is made up of cellulose, it makes cell very tough, very strong and very resistant. Dear students, you know that we as human being or any animal body knows how to protect from the environment. If it is winter season, we will cover ourselves with some woolens. If it is summer season, we will have some way to fight the heat. But plants, they are standing in open. They cannot protect the way we protect ourselves. But that does not mean that they will not survive and they will not protect themselves. They have this cell wall to protect their internal tissues, to have normal functioning and thickness of cell wall which uh, will increase gradually will also give more resistance and more strength to any plant to fight the problems which are coming through environment through their surrounding. The centrioles which are very prominent in animal cell are also absent in plant cells. So, basic structure of cell remains the same, but certain small or big things within the cell body will make plant cell different from animal cell and the structure is based on the requirement of the organism whether it is plant or animal. So, my dear students, you have understood that cell is a building block, it works like a brick in a building and it has definite structure to sustain life. With this, we come to the end of this topic. Thank you. Thank you.